separated from other life forms for millions of years, the lake's numerous plant and animal species have evolved in ways that have made them unique. For the novice, it is hard to tell the difference between this seal and its cousins living in the icy waters of the Russian Arctic. Yet, this is no common harbor seal. It is an entirely unique species called the Nerpa, one of the few freshwater seals on Earth. How it got here remains a mystery. The Baikal seal is an incredible creature. It's an aquatic mammal. It's become a sort of symbol. You might say it's Baikal's calling card. It's an extremely curious animal. It's believed the seal's ancestors migrated up the rivers from the Arctic Ocean, gradually passing from seawater to brackish water before finally adapting to the fresh water of Lake Baikal. Cut off from marine seals for thousands of years, Nerpa have evolved distinctly from their distant ancestors. They have a flatter snout, longer claws, bigger eyes, and their hind flippers are very different from those of the ocean-dwelling seals. With its wealth of endemic species such as Gubki and Nerpa, Lake Baikal is a reservoir of unique biodiversity, more biologically rich than any other lake on Earth. It's also a true inland sea, whose influence on the climate is clearly visible. For over 50 years, scientists have been taking shifts in the weather stations located along the shores of Lake Baikal, attempting to understand the lake's highly particular climate. Yuri Usov has been studying the question for over 20 years. Visitors are rare in the winter, but Sasha never fails to turn up. Oh, <laughs> Every three hours, summer and winter, Yuri records the temperature, pressure, humidity, and all the other data that go into making a weather forecast. Generally, we see the lowest temperatures in January. Right here now, the temperature is about minus 30 or minus 35 degrees. The temperatures Yuri records, first at 50 centimeters, then one meter and two meters deep, show a curious phenomenon. Baikal takes longer to cool down and heat up than the rest of Siberia. For example, in May in Irkutsk, it's the middle of spring, while here on Baikal, it's still winter. It's very cold, and the temperature always drops below freezing at night. In the fall, it's the opposite. Lake Baikal has been heating up all summer, and the water is still pretty warm, so when it starts to get cold in Irkutsk, here on the lake, we still enjoy nice fall days. Baikal acts like a kind of thermal buffer zone. Its immense volume of water gives it a great deal of inertia and influences the climate for dozens of kilometers around the lake. Today, it's a rare few who have managed to adapt to this splendid yet hostile environment. The cold, isolation, and challenging lifestyle are powerful dissuasions to anyone who considers settling along these shores. Poachers have long taken advantage of the situation, and the survival of certain rare animal species is occasionally threatened. Forest rangers 
are the final defenders of this endangered biodiversity. Only four people still spend the winter in Davsha, a village built in the 50s. Two meteorologists, Yura, the forest ranger, and his girlfriend, Irina, who also tends the small animal museum on the reserve. The scientists and their families who used to live year-round in this quaint and sleepy village only return once the weather warms up, leaving Yura on his own to develop a close relationship with the unspoiled nature. The first nut hatch that grew accustomed to me has stayed nearby. It takes a seed, then flies off to hide it in my shirt or hat, then comes back to fetch another seed. Once the great tits saw that, they started landing on my arm too. Actually, they heard the chirps. When a bird flies away happy after a good meal, it starts chirping with joy, and the others hear it. Yura doesn't communicate with all the animals of the forest yet, but he is able to detect the least little trace of them in the snow. A small, endangered creature happened by here not long ago. These here are the fresh tracks of a sable that came to check out this hole. It ventured out to the forest, had a look around, then went back since it didn't find anything worthwhile. Despite a total hunting ban since the beginning of the 20th century, Siberian sables have always attracted poachers for their fur. In 1915, the species were even in danger of extinction. Biologists offered to study the vast expanses of Siberia. And it was here, around Lake Baikal, that the last remaining sables were discovered. Here. If I'm not mistaken, there were about 2,000 sables left in all of Russia. At that moment, the question arose. It was absolutely necessary to study and protect them, and the reserve was created. The reserve has allowed the sable to escape hunters and survive as a species. In Davsha, they now venture right up to Yura's house, giving him a chance to capture his encounters with the little creatures on film. <laughs> <laughs> 